A warm welcome to you once again, my friend, and welcome to the most in-depth Depeche Mode album review series ever conducted by an independent YouTuber, so I'm told. Yes, I started this independent album review series back in 2019, and it's been going for a long time. We're now on Songs of Faith and Devotion, one of my favorite, and this is part six with the mercy in you. So sit back and get ready to geek out. Just when you think we couldn't go deeper, we go deeper and deeper and deeper. In this episode, we're going to analyze the song, looking at the chords, the structure. I'm going to break it down and play it to you on the piano. We are then going to examine some of the original Alan Wilder sound banks from his keyboard banks from the devotional tool. And we're going to break down those sounds and listen to them in isolation. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're then going to play it through. And we're also going to do a separate segment on the guitars with my good friend and mix engineer, Andy Marlow, where he will break down the guitar parts. It's going to be a blast. And just before we jump in, I did announce recently that Mode, the photographic book by my dear friend, the late, great Brian Griffin, is now in production. We are doing a second pressing. You can place your order now. And all the information is available at vaughngeorge.com. Right, let's jump into today's episode. The Mercy in You was, to me, always one of the most out there songs on this great album. Uh, the chord progressions, just the way it moves, it's got a very sort of like jading, uh, it's not a very flowing kind of song. And when I say that, I don't mean that in a bad way. Whatever they try to achieve with atmosphere, I think they more than met the brief. Because it's really unsettling. I don't think it's meant to sound nice. Uh, nice. Although I don't think anything on this album sounds nice. I think even songs like One Caress, which is, you know, warm and, uh, you know, sort of like uh, orchestral. It doesn't sound nice. You know, it, it's just... It's, it's, it's stunning, but it's not nice. You know, it's like nice is a very weak word, I think. Something is nice. There's nothing nice on this album. Coming back to this song, The Mercy in You, it is just absolutely mad. And in all the detail that we're going into this video, you will see what I mean. From the way the chords change right up into the strange decisions that were made in the production and the mixing. At the end of the day, it works. Let's jump into it, starting off with the structure on piano. Right, let's analyze the song looking at the chord structure to start off with. Now, this song, like many Depeche Mode songs, many Martin Gore songs, follows a very somewhat bizarre, let's just say unconventional chord structure. I remember hearing it the first time, and I remember it it feels like a slap against the head, <laughs> not in a bad way, but just the way the chords kind of move. Like it's, it's very jarring and jading. If you strip back all the production and you know, the synthesizers and all those good things, and you just focus on the you know the the structure of the song. You'll see there are fundamentally two fields. You have the the verses, which are very strong and stern, and then you get to this chorus, which is very sort of like open and angelic. And and, and there are two different opposing fields, you know, in this in the song, which which adds to the tension. Now let's start off by playing the shell chords, the sort of foundational chords, which are the foundation of the song, and just listen to how powerful and how stern it is and how unconventional it is at the same time. It's just mad the way those chords move. It's so difficult to sort of like conventional like pop music. You know, this sort of conventional pop song with four chords that goes from a C to an F to an A minor to a G, that kind of thing. The, and of course, Depeche Mode is not competing with this. They've never, ever been in that field. But just as a, as a music listener, just listening to it, it just comes at you. So for those of you in the community here who are keyboardists, I'll just tell you the chords. It's A minor, B, C minor, E minor, D, E flat, A flat, and back to C minor. 
But guys, remember, I'm not musically trained, and therefore I like my explanations to be quite inclusive. So if you're just a fan and you don't understand music and notation, I like to explain it in such a way that, you know, it's, it's hopefully it's easy for you to understand. And I myself am no concert pianist. But now, working with just the feel, and of course, I always focus on the feel because music is about feel. So, so I don't like it when people talk too technically because it's just feel. That's It's from the heart. Now, just, just listen to this. And then the chords all of a sudden start moving faster. It's like when you hear it the first time, you never know where the next chord is coming. You know, with a lot of conventional kind of pop music, you can kind of anticipate the next chord. Like You can sort of <laughs> anticipate. You cannot anticipate this. Listen to that. Lost my way there for a second. Now let's run through the structure of the song. Um, I'm going to just sing this gently for demonstrational purposes. I'm not performing it, so don't be too harsh on me. Let's look at the structure. Starting on the A minor. You know what I need when my heart bleeds. I suffer from greed, a longing to feed. On the mercy in just very very intense we then come to the second verse which is the same structure but obviously different lyrics I can't conceal the way I'm held the pleasure I feel when I have to deal with the mercy in you we then come to the chorus as I was saying there are two sort of opposing feelings in the song. There's the, the beginning, you know, the, the verse where it's got the sort of stern feeling, and then when we get to the chorus, it really sort of like lightens up and it's got this like heavenly feeling. And for context, I would do it all again, lose my way and fall again, just so I can call again on the mercy in you. And in the background, while Dave's singing that, you've got like these angelic angels and choirs. It's, it's very sort of uplifting. I would do it all again and then the oh, lose my way and fall again. Then we get to the C sharp, yeah? Just so I can call again on the mercy in you. Now, let me just play a verse and a chorus, just using the piano, no singing. I just want you to focus on the feel, how it goes from stern to sort of very light and angelic. We're then on to the second verse. When here in my mind, I feel inclined to wrongly treat you unkind. I'll have faith and I'll find the mercy in you. Forgive me if I get the words wrong sometimes. 
And then that time around, it's just that one verse, and then we're straight into the chorus again. I would lose my way again Be led hopelessly astray again Just so I can pray again For the mercy in you And then it goes... And that's a really mad part. You've got Martin's vocal in the background going, uh, 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 uh. Once again, Martin's voice being used as a vocal effect, as they do in many Depeche Mode songs. That's very Depeche Mode. Watch this. Obviously, the opening sequence to enjoy the silence. But back to this, the mercy in you, it goes. And then it just goes mad and it comes back straight into the bridge again. When here in my mind, I have been blind, emotionally behind. I'll have faith I'll find the mercy in you. And this is where Martin Gore gives one of the most outstanding vocal performances, I believe, of his of of, of his recording history. When he does the The Mercy in You. And I'm just doing that now in a light head voice. The mercy in you. The mercy in you. That's what he's singing, but of course, he's absolutely belting it. He's going, the mercy in you, and I'm not going to do it, but he's, he's doing it. It's, it's, you know, it's a real sort of belt, belting vocal, and I was always a little bit disappointed when I saw it live because, you know, when you're watching it live, you're sort of, wait, you're, you're expecting that, and he doesn't do it live. Um, uh, well, there's several reasons for that. He's, wah, 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 he's doing that guitar riff, but also um, that particular part. Uh, he would have probably, you know, if, if you're doing a two-hour show, you've got to do what they call vocal budgeting. You can't just, you know, tear the arse out of your voice. Tear the arse out of your voice. But anyway, I do love that. The mercy in you, the mercy. You can hear he's really, really screaming it, and it really, really gives it this angst intensity. And this song is one of the most, the whole album is very angst and intense but this to me is one of the sort of most angsty and intense songs on the album it's absolutely beautiful there's a lot going on here but as i always do on this channel if you strip everything away and just focus on the chords and the melody by using just an acoustic piano you can hear that it's not smoke and mirrors and all the emotion and stuff that you hear on the final record it has a different feel when played just like this but it fundamentally proves that it's a beautiful song Now let's take this a step further as we analyze the great Alan Wilder's keyboard parts as performed in the devotional shows. Right, now it becomes really fun and geeky. What I've got here are the original Alan Wilder sounds 
from his sound bank from the devotional tour. Now, many of you Depeche Mode fans will agree with me that the official release we got for devotional, that devotional DVD, which is still on YouTube and everywhere, you know the one I'm talking about. We are all very, very familiar and au fait with that performance, and I will be referencing that throughout this video. So what you're going to hear now are Alan's sounds, and these sounds are now mapped from the bottom to the top of the keyboard. Now, if you're a keyboard player, you will understand what mapping means, but for the sake of those who don't know what it means, mapping is the term which we keyboardists use to describe where the sounds are allocated on the keyboard. What I have here is an 88-note Hamill-weighted controller keyboard. Now, the keyboard which Alan used on the devotional tour was an Akai MX-1000, and that was a 76-note Hammer-weighted controller keyboard. Similar to this, but um, this is an 88 key, so it had less keys, and it would start, so you wouldn't have these keys, it would start over there on the, on the E key. And the reason I'm telling you this is it'll become apparent later on. But now, you know, with normal keyboards and synthesizers, when you change a sound, you'll have a synthesizer sound running across the keyboard, or you might have a piano sound, you know what I mean? But mapping means you have different sounds across the keyboard, or zoning, so you'll have zone one, two, three, four, and with controller keyboards, you typically have four zones, but then of course with more complex, you know, setups, you can have a lot more sounds, but we don't wanna get beside ourselves. Just understand now, that you can have different sounds mapped throughout the keyboard, and that is where we use the term mapping. So I'm gonna run through the song now as it's performed live, and then I will just dis discuss every sort of sound and we'll get into some of the, the parts, etc. Now, remember, Devotional, The Mercy in You, Dave Garn on the lead vocals, you had the two backing singers at the back there, you had Martin on his guitar, and you had Fletch behind his keyboards, clapping most of the time. And Alan throughout the devotional tour was between keyboards and drums, but for this song, The Mercy in You, he was behind his keyboards, and this is what he did. So it starts off with like a boom, 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 boom like a loop, looping kind of uh, bon you know, set of bongas, and a real sort of <laughs> And then Alan goes, recognize that? That is obviously taken straight from the record. Now, if you're a fan, your neck hairs are probably standing up because that is so iconic and the sounds are just brilliant. Once again, as I've always demonstrated throughout the album review series is, even if it's just a little sound that comes at you, you know, quickly, if you isolate that sound and analyze it. The attention to detail back in, 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 the, in the Alan Wilder period were just phenomenal. What's going on here? Listen to this. Now that is the sort of core fundamental sound of that. I think we can all agree it's a, it's a piano sound. It's, it's a, low, a low E note on a piano. But listening in the background, it's got like a clack, 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 some, some kind of percussive element. You hear that? It also has like a whoa, it's almost got a, like, a, like a droning kind of sound. So, so just on the, on the surface of it, there are three sounds there. Now there could be more, I don't know what the exact process is. Once again, I'm just trying to point out that every sound has got so much detail, nuance and complexity. Let's do it again. You hear that? It's like a piano and there's like a rhythmic element and then there's like a, like a, like a droning pad kind of thing. I think we can all agree that's a guitar effect. And what's interesting is, is when you listen to the song, uh, you, you'll see that a lot of the guitar sounds are coming from Alan. So the opening sequence is essentially... So you can see those guitar parts. That's the first part, and then second part, and the third third time round we play the first part again, and then the fourth fourth time. So that was necessary to do because Martin, although he's playing the guitar, he's playing the wah 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 wah, and of course he can only play one melody at a time, obviously. 
So, once again. Okay, we then come to the opening vocals, and Dave is singing the first verse. Now watch this. You know what I need when my heart bleeds. I suffer from grief, a longing to feed. On the mercy in you Now did you notice something? I was playing piano chords using one finger. Watch again. On the mercy in you. Now, when I first got hold of these keyboard banks and I, you know, and I opened this up, I was really shocked to see that Alan's keyboard parts would have a whole chord played on one key, if, if you know what I mean. Without, without being disrespectful, I think we all know that Fletch wasn't much of a keyboarder, so a lot of his keyboard parts would be, would be programmed in such a way that they were very easy to play. They were. So sometimes he, he'd be holding down a key and it would be playing a whole sequence or there'd be like a, a whole musical motive holding down one key. But I was fascinated to see that on Alan's keyboard bank shelf, he's actually got the chords programmed into one key. And then I thought to myself, well, surely Alan can play chords. I mean, you saw in the previous segment of the video, you know, if I could quite easily play those chords, then I'm sure Alan Wilder, who's a far better musician than me, could without any problems play those chords. Now, one of the possible reasons for that is if he had, you know, most of this keyboard dedicated to sort of piano sound, like in order to play a chord, he would need a lot more keys, if you know what I mean. So if he was going to map his keyboard to accommodate for the fact that he would be playing piano chords, there'd be a lot less physical notes left for him to do the other stuff. I hope I'm making sense here. But also, there's another thing to that, you know, Alan's got nothing to prove. So the fact that you know, the fact that there's a whole chord, you know, programmed on one key, it's nothing to do with the, it, it doesn't mean that he's not able to play it. Of course, we all know Alan is a, a phenomenal musician. One of the reasons this could be is, is that these sounds are taken straight from the records, the actual key, you know, the actual um, chords, you know, the actual sounds are taken from the record and mapped directly onto the keyboard here. And that is important because those fundamental signature sounds are what makes these songs. Now, it's a little bit different to the way Depeche Mode sound these days. I don't want to go into that. But Depeche Mode these days are a lot more of a jamming kind of band. Um, they're a very different band to what they were back in those days. And I don't want to get into that. But just looking how chords are programmed into the keys here. Interestingly enough, and, and you saw in the previous segment where I sang, sang this, playing the, the full chords, uh, it does indeed start on, on an A. And what he's got here, he's got the A minor chord programmed into this A key. And if we hit the B, there's the B chord, uh, the C minor chord, and then the E minor, and then the E flat, and the the A flat chord as well. So he's got all those chords programmed into the one key. But also, along with that, comes the fundamental nuance which makes that sound. And it, you know, these sounds are very integral to the record. So these sounds, in, as far as I can hear, are taken straight from the record and you know, they're, they're mapped onto the keys. I hope I'm making sense here. So once again. You know what I need when my heart bleeds. I suffer from grief, a longing to feel on the mercy in you. And then back to you. Second verse. I can't conceal the way I'm here, the pleasure I feel when I have to deal. With the mercy in you, and then back to you. 
Then we come to that heavenly chorus, and it's as follows. I would do it all again Lose my way and fall again Just so I can call again For the mercy in you Now, what did I do there? Watch this. This is interesting, because once again, he's got a lot of complex parts programmed into single notes. So, on the chorus... Notice I hit these two keys together, the F and the F sharp. I would do it all again. So let's break this down. On the F. I would do it all again. But notice I hit this F sharp at the same time. Listen to this. So on this F sharp, it's like a piano, like a piano trill. And then at the bottom here, it's kind of like a, uh, I like to call it like a heavenly demonic choir because it's it's choirly and but, but it also sounds quite demonic but but it's light and dark at the same time you know what I mean so it's so you've got and you can actually hear the looping how it's oh, like you know where, where where the seams are but of course if you never actually hear the loop or the seams is because the sounds are programmed in such a way that you you would never hold it down long enough in so you would never hear the seams I hope, I hope that makes sense so once again from the beginning so we have that and the piano so it hits those together I would do it all again lose my way and fall again and then we come to the A and the A sharp here yeah, and we do the same thing just so I can call again for the mercy in you. Now, once again, those two together. And then these two together. So once again, there's nothing there, and then it's like a piano part. So the chorus, hit these two together. Then these two. Just so I can call again. For the mercy in you. We then come to the second verse. When here in my mind. I feel inclined to wrongly treat you unkind. I'll have faith and I'll find the mercy. Now, what he does this time, instead of just playing that A, I believe he plays the octave. It's 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 not straightforward because remember that when you listen to that the, the the live version, the mix, it's very dense. There's a lot there's a lot happening. But I as assume he's doing this because if we look at this here, we have this. So to me, it sounds like he's playing the piano part, but he's also bringing in the octave, whereby bringing in these additional parts, which are... Which are essentially the same chords, the same notes as these uh, keyboard notes, um, but it, it's added to bring another layer. Let me just demonstrate. The mercy. And then we come to the next chorus once again. I would lose my way again Be led hopelessly astray again And these two Just so I can pray again For the mercy in you And then we've got this signature part which Alan plays And then the whole song just becomes really sort of like demonic. Uh, 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 it just goes mad. 
Now let's analyze the sound in isolation. <laughs> God knows how they've done it. There's a lot of detuning on there. You can you can hear the looping, but there's also like a like a pluck, but uh, more like a percussive kind of sound. Listen, and, uh, 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 with with delay. And if, you, and if you hold it down, let's play it at half time. Now you see, if I play it that slowly, you can hear the looping, you know, where the seams are joined. But of course, you don't hear the loops, and you don't hear the seams because it's programmed in such a way that because of the tempo, you would never play it that slowly, if that makes sense. I mean, it's really haunting, very, very haunting, almost, I don't want to say demonic, but it's it's got like a really, uns everything about this record is con very unsettling. And once again, it's the cumulative effect of, of all the attention to details on these individual sounds which, you know, contribute to this amazing record. You've got the uh, 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 and then we come back again to this part. Now we have the last verse, which sort of like builds into the grand finale. And for this, this time round, he's doing the same things. I'm going to play the left hand first, and then I'll play the right hand afterwards. When here in my mind, I have been blind, emotionally behind. Mercy in you. Now, once again, on the record, Martin does that. The mercy in you. He really gives one of these mo one of his most outstanding vocals of all times. Of course, live he doesn't do that. And I was a little bit a little bit disappointed when I watched it live many years ago, thinking, oh, he doesn't do that dramatic vocal. But believe me, I don't think he'd have a voice left after that. Because if you listen to him, the way he sings that, the mercy you the way he sings that on the record you know he's screaming i mean if he did that live he would he'd tear the ass out of his voice that's not a technical term by the way so once again on that part alan plays that with the left hand but he's also doing this with the right hand now he brings in this counter melody which is as follows starting on the f yeah Mercy in you. It's all there. Brilliant. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play the Mercy in You track from the devotional show, and I'm going to play Alan's keyboard parts along with it. This will be great for context, so you'll be able to see, you know, what he did at what particular time of the song. And please note that the the song's going to be mixed in such a way where the sounds I'm playing are going to be exaggeratedly loud, and the reason for that is so that you can actually hear what I'm playing. I hope you enjoy it. And how are you doing? Good. Thank you very much. Mercy in you. Yes. You've, uh, le you're learning a lot more Depeche Mode in, in, in yeah, a very short time. Three in the last day and a bit. I must say it's pretty good. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been good fun. Uh, this song I found slightly harder as it's slightly less um, doesn't usual. Flow, it doesn't flow in the same way as Walking in Your Shoes does. Yeah. So um, and it sounds like things have been sampled probably and mm. played back in. Mm. Um, so it's not a sort of a natural 
guitar part. Yeah. But it's it's a different song, so yeah. You know, it's yeah. it is what it is. Sort it's, of de thing. it's definitely. I mean, Walking in My Shoes has has been credited as as one of Martin's best songs ever. Yeah. But I mean, this is an album track. But I mean, yeah. But I mean, yeah. It's, but you it, know, it, the, the parts are really cool. But it just it doesn't flow in a way that. I would, I, I personally would find easy no, to I, do live. I, I, I also understand that as well. It's also if you look at kind of like the structure in a way, it's got like a lot of like chromatics in the way the yeah, chords, yeah. the chords don't so like with, I mean, this is not it's uncompromising in its own way. Yeah, yeah. It's like walking my shoes, doom, doom, it kind of like drifts. This thing kind of goes, why well, I have to deal? Yeah, like yeah, kind of yeah. Goes, which is a different feel. Yeah. But, you know, part of it was the intent of, Doing that, you know, maybe it's you know some songs you want people to feel uncomfortable or not. Or, what, yeah, what yeah, is that? yeah. Really? It, oh, that's oh god, that's oh that's close that one. <laughs> I, I think that's exactly what I'm going for. Let's look at the the uh, the opening part. I'm going to actually oh. give you a reference uh, a, a reference okay. sample. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got that it's, yeah. yeah. So that does it, I think, four times like that, it's, and then the sort of wild guitar, which we'll come to yeah. in a minute, comes in, um, and that just repeats. And each time there's a that part, it's nearly the same, mm. except one time it's yeah, yeah, going yeah. into the choruses. Yeah. So the the notes are G, D sharp, and C, but with a slide. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. On the last bit. yeah, and, and of that, course, there's a lot of like effect on it as well, like delay and stuff. Yeah, like, wow, it makes yeah. It. So it's sort of it's a simple part. This isn't the exact delay that they're using on this. No. It just sort of helps illustrate. Yeah, you know, it gives it some movement. It's, uh, yeah. it's not quite the same as. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's sort of it's, you know this is a bit too long. It's a bit too middly bottom. Yeah. Things like that compared to the record and yeah. things, but it's all just sort of showing showing off the parts. This guitar's in D tuning because of playing the. Oh yeah. It has to be D tuned, so sure. it's to a D D. Okay. So to play a power chord, a bar chord, it's just the bottom three. So I'll just quickly sing the chorus, but before I do, just just play it with the and, and shout okay. out the chords. So okay, so it starts off in an A. It's a really strange progression, isn't it? Yes. The way that it's really like it really. Yeah. A, I like to call it a gorism on my channel because yeah. Martin Gore uses these strange progressions. Anyway, okay. So those are the notes. Let's just sing it and see okay. how it goes. One, two, two three. three, four. You know what I need when my heart bleeds. I suffer from greed, a longing to feed. On the mercy in you, etc. On the later bits of that, it's an A. I can't conceal the way I'm in, C. the pleasure I feel off. when off. I have to deal. I write, yeah. Well, the mercy. So it's missing every so other, other miss chord, so really and they just drop. They just stop. They just start, yeah. There's just sort of a hole. Yeah, because you, 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 you'd you think if it starts off with the first way, uh, where it's a chord played every yeah. time, and then when it gets to that second part, there's just, they just miss Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so the keyboards well, sort of have become more prominent uh, there. Just, just, just for that moment. Well, but, but I mean, they don't actually get louder, but it's just the guitar isn't taking up some space. I think we can blame Alan Wilder for that, because he was just like, Get really into the innovation and doing those types of things. Yeah. So we're giving. So yeah, I mean, it's dark and shade, and you know, it's sort of it's not conventional to you know, it's more conventional to. Okay. But rather than. So those two chords are missing from that section. Yeah, that's hilarious. So the the B is missing. Then you miss the E and the D, yeah. and you only play so you only play A, C, 
E flat and B flat that wow. twice the second times. <laughs> it's so unconventional, and it's, it's at those exact parts where the keyboard or synthesizer parts or something else takes precedence. Oh, but only, but they don't actually. Doesn't feel like there's a. Oh, we're doing this yeah, now. Yeah, it yeah. just it, the it, guitar it, drops out. It just drops. Uh, see, okay. It's like yeah, it's quite unusual. <sighs> So yeah, we've done the sort of the lead part, um, and when it goes into a chorus, is I would lose my way. Nothing for a Be led hopelessly astray again. Just so I can pray again. For the mercy in that's that that that's is it. that that's it for guitars. Yeah, in that, in that section. Because you've got you've got that. That you've got top. That. Because I think it's because it makes way for all that yeah. sound. Yeah. So that's a B flat, and then I was just bending and ramping in the volume. I see. And then it's a uh, G sharp, D sharp. And that, that's that's it for that section. Okay, and then let's say that you've got the main sort of rhythmic section. Yeah. So the the, the when the solo is coming in, it's all the the, the the tune comes in when it sort of kicks in a bit. The, the basic is a wah. Is the basic yeah, yeah. sort of pattern. Yeah. It de it develops each time it happens. Sometimes it only happens like. One once round, sometimes it's twice. Then there's longer sections. So more developed versions later on, particularly at the end, is the. So it's C, D, C, C, and an A. D sharp, G sharp. Okay. It's something along those lines. This is not sort of exact, yeah, yeah, yeah. but this is because it's made up of different parts. Of course. Um, but that's sort of the rhythm. As in seeing him doing stuff live yeah. on videos and things, it's sort of he's definitely he's, it's, it's around here. It's yeah. It's that sort of chopping, and just with the foot, it's just rocking it in. Yeah. Oh, so oh, it, oh, so oh. it goes to the the um, the brightest open on the one, two, three, four. So it's just an even. Right, right, right. Yeah, and it's, yeah. So it's, it, that keeps going, and it. So that's just keeping going, and you do all the rhythms with this bit. So you it say, starts off more simply, and then sort of builds. You say that's going. You've got a pedal there. Yeah, it's a ped, a wah pedal. So it's just rocking it from being closed and quite muted with all the tops to being all the tops. So it's like a bandpass filter, very yes, sharply yes. moving. So that's the rhythm that you're doing, but with great effect. Um, so the, yeah, that's that part, and that develops through the song and is slightly different. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a path at the end, which is the underneath, when it starts doing the repeating and out. Something along this line. In the background. Something along like and it, that. It's kind of rhythmic and it's bolstering up. Yeah, it sort of just funks it along a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> funks it along, yeah. And then that develops after four with a one. That be at the end when yeah. it goes. Oh, it goes. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, you don't consciously hear that, but it's, it's in the background. Yeah. So those two parts go over each other, and then also you're getting there. Okay, so it's fundamentally three guitar parts yeah. at the same time. But I mean, the, you know, the clean, that clean one just doing the. Or, you know, yeah, that's yeah. not the exact rhythm. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of parts to learn in a day and a bit. So yeah, no, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm no, forgetting no. them slightly. Yeah, yeah. But um, 
Yeah, so that's just adding a little rhythm and yeah. Yeah. beefing up the bass slightly as well sure. on certain notes. Sure, sure. But yeah, it just gives it a real groove. Because if you, when I recorded it to check how I'm getting along with the parts I record it in against the song. Yeah. Um, and that's another good way of hearing the differences or if you're getting it right or wrong. Mm. You know, if it's glaringly yeah, they're playing yeah, something yeah. different, yeah, it's yeah. like you've got yeah. to go and listen again. <laughs> but if you take the track out and you can hear the bounce of... Oh, with a... It's really funky. Yeah, yeah. Really wah, funky. Wah, wah, and it's, wah, 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 it's sort of dirty, and you know, whilst give it that sort yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Quite growly. So those those are all the main. The main parts, yeah. The main As parts. I say, funny, funny enough, on the chorus, nothing really sort of happening except just for those. Yeah, uh, just yeah. a few little notes here and there, but you know, it sort of gives it that space. Anyway. So those, yeah, those those are all the parts for the for well, the you, song. Uh, are you ready to uh, to do a run through? Yes. Just, let's, let's. I have to stand for this because I can't operate the wire pedal as oh, well. Oh, okay. Well, we'll uh, get, let you get strapped up and we'll uh, jump into that. <laughs> 